Hello, welcome back to Pure Data Tutorial. And today we are going to look at the bang in Pure Data. It's a, it's a command that says, okay, do something, do it, uh, execute it now. And it helps you with a little GUI object. It's a button you can press and start a process or initiate something. And we combine it with a, a little, yeah, have a closer look at object and message boxes. So again, we have a new patcher, we go to edit mode and we place our favorite object print now because it's quite handy for this purpose. And we want to create a message box and put in a number one, two, three. So then we have a number box, it's three and it's a number we can display. So today we build a little structure and we want to hand over the message 123 to a number box to set a new value and then let the number box output their stored number to the print object which makes the number visible. We try if it's working and we see perfect it's setting the number box to the value and instantly prints it out so we make for example a second message box it's called 6 connect it to the number box and now we can toggle between two values. Awesome. Number boxes by default forward the information straight to their outlet. And messages, as we have, as we have seen, can contain two atoms. For example, hello world, it's like two words. And we can instantly print them, connect them here. And it says hello world. But message boxes can also execute some functions with certain um, atoms or certain um, yeah, first arguments. So we create a message box and say set and then a number like uh, 2, 2, 2, 222 and connect it to the number box. And now we call a new function and we set the number box, but it doesn't output. So to remember, set a number to the number box, instantly forward it and prints it to the PD window. But setting it like set space and a number only sets the value without output. This is a very, very important concept because set message means please set a new number, a new text, whatever message, but don't do further processing. Set message, but no further processing. That's very important. Now, instead of clicking all those uh, funny um, boxes or dragging and uh, yeah, changing them there, we can start a code or start a process by using the so-called bang. It's there, Einfügen or put in English. It's called the bang. Then we have a little button and in live mode we can click it and it gives a visual feedback and the bang is the pure data pendant of do it. Please do it now. Please start it. It's like clicking or whatever. So if we connect this and hit the message box, I clear this window shortly, it says just the same as clicking the number box, do this whole process. Uh, we can, if you remember, copy and paste, um, use the button also to try perform the set. So if we want to change this number box, but no output, we bang this message. It sets the number box and voila. Useful thing of this is um, a performing order. And remember from this uh, video PD pane, PD remembers the order you draw the chord lines. So let's say you want to print out three messages um, one after another, but in computation time, like that appears to us in real time, we connect first, second and third, and we press bang. Now we can, voila, first print out this, see? and print out a second 
and then later set the number box here. So everything works fine, perfect. But the problem is we can't remember the yeah, <laughs> which chord we draw first. Maybe it was like this. So or maybe then set and then maybe this. I clear the print window and if I execute it now, it's totally different. It first set the number box to 222, but we don't see it anymore because afterwards it triggered the middle message. You see it here, it printed this and later this, it printed the first message. So you see the problem. We don't have control over process order anymore. A very important object to simply keep track of this is the so-called trigger object. We call command one an object and it's called trigger. And trigger does nothing more than um, distributing banks and numbers, but we come back to that later. Remember, right click, help, so we get further information on the trigger object. Trigger is executed by one bang, and then it does everything from right to left, what's written in trigger. So it's a space, bang, bang, bang. If we put three bangs in it, we get three outlets, and it will always process from right to left. First bang, second bang, third bang. If we now need another bang, we just type it and we get four outlets. So for our use case, we just need three. So I go back and I, so I know this will happen first. So now I have totally control and I say, okay, this I need first. And then maybe this I need second. And then maybe this I need third. And remember, right to left. If I now bang it, we see exactly the processing order. First print this, second set a number, of course this will disappear, and then do this. Um, because this is quite important to use all the time, and um, this is <laughs> way too much text to type, PD also um, deals with uh, short versions and abbreviations, and the trigger object is also called with just T. It's exactly the same like this and the information bang is always called with a B. So now we have a trigger object which puts out one bang and if we want a short version of this we have trigger bang bang bang. So these are exactly equivalents. We could make a, like this and to prove it we copy the button, connect it is called this front and now we maybe make this one first here second here third there and now we can execute it here we go clean the window again do it first this second this perfect so keep in mind we can um, control the process order very, very easily with the trigger object, trigger, and then just a number of banks, for example. And then we always know which was the order to process things. It's short and T, B, B, B for trigger, bang, bang, bang. And it's our most favorite object for now. <laughs>